Welcome back to Zero to Fight Stick, and this is an episode about building a status LED array. Okay, so what do you need? Well, let's start with, yes, you need a base, and I just use an Altoids lid. You have to take the lid off because the whole case and the LEDs are just too tall, So, the, but the lid works. Um, then you just need some of these sockets which are E10 you can buy a pack of 25 on Amazon for cheap and LEDs these are 3 volt E10 LEDs and they come in a pack of 30 I know it's excessive and they take a little while to ship so just be ready for that but they do come in a nice assortment of colors so we can indicate you know red is player 1 player 2 or uh, combination if you're using the retro board like I am all right also going to need this guy. It's a, we haven't made it pretty or wire wrapped or anything yet. I just wanted to show off what uh, you need. First of all, this is a JST PH 5 pin connector. Uh, same kind of connector that the Retro and the UFB use, except it's just 5 pin. A lot of the others are 4 pin. Uh, I use black for my common ground, or sorry, these power, which is you know not really what you're supposed to do. I probably should use white, but hey, there you go. Um, and then each other strand, so you can see red, yellow, red, yellow, green, blue, corresponds to one of their colors. You will also need a ring terminal crimper, and this has a wire stripper on it. Uh, I use zip strips to put these, to mount these guys, but you can use screws and nuts if you like and you want some crimpable ring terminals uh, and just the usual wire wrap stuff so if you have cord wrap and heat shrink and the heat shrink gun uh, toenail clippers is going to be useful of course they always seem to be it's it's crazy how useful they are um, not only for helping with your uh, cut wires you know just making the right size but also to cut the ends off your zips your zip strips as I call them so to get started let's presume we've already made this cable I've shown how to make these in previous episodes uh, let's just start with your Altoids lid and you'll want a couple tools for this one you want a marker and a folded out paper clip and one of these guys. So what I do, you'll notice on this, I have the terminals going diagonally. If you line them up straight, or if you line them up vertically, you're gonna have problems because the, these terminals will contact with each other. However, in a diagonal configuration, they don't, so you don't get shorts, which is really helpful. Uh, what you wanna do is determine if you want your positive which is going to be this side. You'll notice this little tab connects to the underside. And before you screw these in, make sure you tighten down the screw that's inside. And when you're putting these in, be very careful. These tops can really break super easy. I've broke like three of the blue ones. I think they're just weaker. I don't know why. But, um, anyhow, you just want to figure out how you're going to orient these. So let's say I decide I want them all turned the same way and I want the negative, which is the jacket kind of side, the receptacle side, to face out or to face one way. So we'll just do it this way. We're not really too worried. This is going to be a five uh, LED because we only have one, two, three, four players. And, or status indicators plus a turbo LED. So that's all we need. Once you get an idea of where you want things, make sure you know you don't have contacts that are going to touch each other. I know you think, well, what if I have them diagonally? Wouldn't they touch that way? They just don't seem to do it. So we're good there. Um, once you're locked down, you're pretty much where you want to be. Just make sure, hold it down firmly. And I just use this guy to get in there and make scratches because you just can't really get a pen in there. Um, it doesn't seem to work unless you have a really you know, long pen or something that will make marks on this metal 
little tin. Um, you know, once you scratch it, I just take a regular, you know, permanent marker, make marks on it to tell you where to drill. All right. Notes on drilling. So, what you might have to do. Uh, on the top, I was able to use a 764 drill for these small zip strips. They'll fit in pretty well. However, since you want it to be kind of, you know, you want it to rest flat so we can secure it better, um, we need to drill holes on the sides and some on the corners. And if you use that big drill on the corners or the sides, it gets really squirrely really fast and you're liable to hurt yourself. So don't do that. Uh, the nice thing is you have the built-in hinge holes, so you, you may not have to do a couple holes there. However, if you look on the side of my pre-built one, I had to do a few there, a couple in the corners, and so on. Um, if you have a smaller drill, like a Dremel drill, you can drill starter pilot holes and then use the bigger drill to widen them up and make it compatible with your zip strips. Now, absolutely, you can use screws and nuts. I just didn't have any nuts and I was getting impatient, so I just went with that option. And I felt like, well, there's even less chance of uh, making a short circuit from something hitting a, a screw that was holding it down. Not very likely, but, you know, whatever. So that said, once you have them all drilled, all you have to do is start inserting your zip strips. I know they're cable ties or what have you, in your neck of the woods. Uh, making sure that you know you have the negatives and positives the way you want. Remember, the negatives are going to be on the jacket, so you can see the exposed there, and the positive is the tab that connects to the bottom of these receptacles which you can't see here because that's blocking it, obviously. Um, once you get those and tighten them up, all you need to do is clip off the ends with our handy dandy toenail trimmer. If you have a proper side trimmer, that's perfect too, that works. Um, after that, it's just a matter of wiring them and connecting up to your either Brook Retro, your FB, or whatever board you're using. And that's bas the basics of how to make a DIY status light indicator. Let me know your questions in the comments. I hope you're enjoying the series, and uh, if you haven't already, subscribe. Thanks.